Good afternoon. My name is Allison Zuniga from NASA Ames at the Space Portal Office, and uh, I'll be talking today about our NASA FDL project. There you go. Yeah, to provide some uh, background, uh, FDL is a frontier development lab. This is a project uh, that we started about four years ago. Um, so this is a partnership between uh, NASA Ames and the SETI Institute and some of our uh, local Silicon Valley companies that excel in AI, such as Google and NVIDIA and Intel. So we've uh, come together uh, to, uh, to solve some of our most uh, challenging and data intensive uh, science and uh, exploration problems. Um, so uh, I guess an advantage uh, for Ames, the benefit to Ames and, um, and the SETI, we get to do some groundbreaking work, um, get to uh, solve some very challenging science problems that we're very interested in, uh, but we don't have the um, data tools uh, to, you know, to uh, satisfactorily um, learn from those uh, from that data, and uh, and the benefit to the AI companies are very interested in working with us because this gives them an opportunity to use their latest AI tools and ma machine learning techniques on you know a lot of cool interesting data, and uh, and the companies are, are very much uh, involved and interested, and it can, our uh, number of sponsors uh, and the companies continue to grow, so it's been a very exciting program for us. Um, and the teams are uh, interdisciplinary. So during most of the year, we, uh, we work on setting up what the problems are going to be. So we try to look at what are NASA's interests, SETI's interests, and then uh, tie them up uh, with companies' interests as well. So it does take uh, quite a few months to formulate what these challenging problems are going to be. And they've typically been in uh, specific areas such as heliophysics, astrophysics, um, we have also uh, planetary defense uh, we've done in the past, um, and also astronaut health, and then this year, uh, lunar uh, research. So I've been uh, leading the, the lunar team this year, and how it works is, like I said, during the year, we, we plan what the problems are going to be. We make sure that we have uh, enough sponsors for each one of the teams, and then during the summer time, uh, starting in June, we have an eight-week research sprint time where we have the teams assembled and we select these teams from universities from around the world. They're usually PhD students um, and postdocs who have uh, uh, experience of working in industry. So we have teams of four uh, people, four researchers that are uh, experts in data science and uh, in space science. So we bring these teams together. They're housed here at NASA Ames in our lodging facilities and the teams get to work with the mentors from Google or Intel and NVIDIA. So each team has at least two mentors um, and they each work on the problems that we have set up and they have eight weeks to go ahead and, and uh, dig into the data and come up with some uh, great results. Oops, wrong way. Okay, like I said, I've been uh, leading the, the lunar challenges. So just to talk about uh, our lunar challenges from the past. So in the past, we have looked at, uh, at crater identification, um, also looking for water ice. Um, and then we also did uh, last year some, uh, some challenges in uh, rover, uh, looking at traverses for rovers and doing that uh, automatically. And then also we have done some work in uh, collaborative agents to help multiple rovers uh, explore the, uh, the surface. So those were some of just examples of some of the challenges in, in the past. I'll talk more about the challenge for this year. And as I said, um, we do try to make sure that we are, are working towards as meeting uh, NASA's objectives. And this year, as uh, we know, our goal for returning to the moon by 2024 and returning to stay. So that's why we've picked a uh, challenging problem this year that would help us uh, work with uh, commercial sector as well and looking for um, lunar uh, indications of metallic, metallic deposits by lunar uh, meteor strikes. So this is uh, more uh, information on the challenge uh, that's happening this year. So 
Um, it's estimated that there may be billions of tons of uh, metallic resources on the surface, so there hasn't been a lot of research in this area. It's very uh, difficult to find, so we thought this would be a good challenge in using our AI and machine learning tools to look for any indications of where there may be some, uh, hopefully, large concentrations of metallic deposits. Um, so we've uh, put our teams together um, to look for any, um, any indications, any evidence of uh, meteor or asteroid impacts. Uh, pictured here is an example of a uh, meteorite on the, on the Mars surface. So there's, we've, we've seen uh, pictures uh, from Mars, but we haven't seen anything like that on the, on the moon. So what we're doing is going through uh, various sets of data to see if we might see thermal anomalies or magnetic anomalies, try to correlate that with any uh, imagery data to see if we do see any evidence of uh, uh, metal me meteor strikes or uh, asteroid impacts. And the goal would be to uh, develop high lunar, uh, high resolution resource maps from the, uh, from the evidence that we see. And, and we think this, of course, would help and uh, promote uh, commercial businesses if we do find you know, areas of evidence, then we would want to do some follow-up missions um, and get some ground truth data to uh, validate, our, uh, any, our validate any uh, uh, data that we come up with. Um, we would want to do further research and analysis, and I think that you know, lunar mining is an area where the commercial sector is very interested in so that we may open up a, a, a potential market if we are successful in identifying some uh, metallic deposits. So here's an ex example of uh, some of the data that uh, we are uh, collecting um, and creating data stacks, mainly from LRO data. Uh, looked a lot at the diviner data for thermal anomalies um, and also uh, collecting uh, data from other missions as listed here. So this is the approach that we're taking. We are uh, have been for the last three weeks. This started about the last week of June, like I said, so we're right in the middle of the uh, one of these research sprints. It's an eight-week duration, so we're about four or five weeks into it. So what the team has done so far is uh, collected the data from the various missions, um, and they're uh, putting it in uh, data stacks, and they're focusing primarily at the diviner data to look for thermal anomalies. Uh, there has been a paper from the Chinese Chang'e 3 mission, as uh, pictured here. This is one of their images from that paper, and they were also looking at thermal anomalies um, that may possibly be an indication of uh, metallic surfaces. So during a sunrise or sunset, you would see a rapid temperature change on the metallic surface, you know, um, in contrast to the uh, regolith, the surrounding regolith. So. Um, we're looking at different areas to see if we do see those anomalies and then try to correlate that with data from other missions as well and see if we see the same anomalies as well as also looking at the physical evidence from the image data that we have. So the, the team is, uh, is working through this um, and they will be presenting their results um, soon, on August 15th, there are gonna be a final results from the work that they've done, um, and, and they will uh, recommend some follow-on work, because I'm sure we, we won't uh, have completed and thoroughly you know, looked through all the data, but it would be a good start, and uh, they could uh, provide us some uh, results and some recommendations for ongoing work. Yeah, so, um, so with that, so this is uh, like I talked about FDL. So what we're planning to do in the future, there are a lot more interesting uh, challenges that uh, we can work on, and especially when we have uh, so many companies and sponsors that are interested in using their data tools and helping us with uh, some of these challenging problems. So we're proposing for next year to have a FDL that is pretty much lunar focused. So we would call it a lunar development lab. So it will be the first time that we'll do that. Um, we're hoping to, uh, to do that next year, and we have a number of range of problems that we would look at, and we can expand upon the AI and machine learning tools 
tools to also uh, use design optimization tools to start looking at uh, other things as well as architecture uh, designs and, and looking at um, uh, in-situ resource utilization for building, uh, developing habitats. So these are some uh, draft challenge areas of what we could do for next year if we have uh, you know, multiple teams working with the companies and using all their uh, data uh, uh, tools and, uh, and, and methods and their subject matter experts to help us. Uh, here's a, a list of uh, challenge problems that we think that we can uh, tackle with uh, this type of lunar development lab. So it would range from uh, continuing to do more resource mapping, uh, in addition to doing uh, infrastructure system design and architecture design as well. So we think this would lead us to a road of building a first lunar uh, human outpost. So we start with uh, a lot of the data intensive work that we're doing now. Um, that would lead as well to uh, doing design uh, of first uh, habitats and, and other uh, structures on the moon. And then we could do some prototype hardware and, and ground testing of some of the designs uh, that we develop. And we see that we can also then propose some low-cost flight demonstrations of some of the things that uh, come out of our lab. And this would all lead to, um, this would lead to the first uh, human lunar outpost. So that would be the long-range goal of this lab. So this is the next steps. Um, that we've laid out. Like I said, this is a proposal right now for the Lunar Development Lab, so um, we want to initiate this by next summer, so we're trying to get uh, the sponsors that are interested in helping us, and uh, we do have a number of them, uh, Google, um, Intel, others, so we, we don't uh, lack sponsorship, so we are looking for NASA centers to partner with um, and then to come up so with some really good uh, challenge uh, ideas so that next year we can bring up uh, multiple teams working on these uh, lunar challenges. So with that, there's my contact information if you uh, have any questions. Thank you. We got time for a couple questions. Brian? There's already been structures built out of lunar dust. Not those specific designs I haven't seen. Well, it's made but. by Tommy Gold in Apollo 14 preliminary science report. Uh, that's got the original photograph. Then you look in the website under cohesive. You'll see an animated version of the structures built of lunar dust. OK, I'll, I'll take a look at that. We have talked with one architecture firm, SOM, and uh, they've worked with ESA. And they've uh, been very interested in working with us um, and looking at using the regolith for building structures. So there are a lo lot of ideas. But thanks, thanks for that. I will look into that. Barbara? Barbara, go ahead, Nessa Goddard. Um, I think your approach is interesting. I just would say I wouldn't hold out a lot of hope for finding big iron meteorites on the surface of the moon like we do with Mars. Because the reason those Mars meteorites are there is because they were slowed down by the atmosphere and allowed to uh, hit the surface with lower than hypervelocity speeds. And the moon doesn't allow you to do that, so they hit at hypervelocity speeds and, and vaporized. So I'm not saying don't do it, I'm just saying don't. You know, don't hold your breath if there's yeah, large masses of iron on the lunar we, surface. We've talked about that. We just had a discussion with Brian, and, uh, and Dennis Wingo is, is the lead mentor for our team. So we think we probably see a lot of small fragments, but maybe in a, you know, a, a small area. And hopefully we can pick that up with uh, looking at uh, the thermal data and maybe some, some of the other uh, data sets from other missions. 